Hi there, Izzy from DigitalGoja.com showrooms again. Today we're going to take a look at the most asked questions about the very popular Nikon D3300. This is one of their newer versions of their D line of their smaller design cameras, the 3000 series. There's many of them, they're 3000, they started with that, all the way up to the 3300. So we're going to go over a lot of the basic questions that are being asked on the internet by customers and users just like you. Now, these are very basic questions, so maybe some advanced users might not need this, but guess what? Take a look at this anyway because there might be some questions that you never thought to ask. And again, I scoured the internet. I checked Amazon, eBay, Digital Goja customer service questions, customer service emails. I tried to put together the most common questions that are asked about how to work with our new Nikon D3300. Now, if this video is helpful to you, remember to hit me up with a like button underneath. And subscribe to our channel because we're going to have future sessions and tutorials just like this that might help you out. And also, anytime you have questions or comments, please remember to leave them underneath. All right, let's get to it and take a look at what are the most popular questions on how to work with our new Nikon D3300. Does my Nikon D3300 have an optical finder? Yes, it does. This is one of their DSLRs. This is not of their mirrorless series, which are the J and V series. This one, when you notice, take out the lens. There's your reflex mirror. This is the guy that moves up and down whenever you're going to be doing any kind of imaging. And that way it gives you the actual optical view of whatever you're looking at. So, when you put your lens back on and you look through here, this guy is the optical finder. And then of course, you have your live view LCD. Does my Nikon D3300 have built-in Wi-Fi? No, Nikon didn't put built-in Wi-Fi into this model, I guess to keep the cost down, but you can still get an adapter that plugs in right here where your remote plug-in is and right in this port you can put the what is called the Nikon WU1A and that sells for about forty dollars or so and that allows you to control the camera wirelessly through your smartphone or tablet and also do file transfers to your smartphone or tablet or PC. Are all Nikon lenses compatible with my Nikon D3300? Well, that's actually a really good question. Nikon has not changed their mount even from way back in the early 80s, late 70s when they had the, even the E-series lenses like this old guy right here. This is from the film era. Now, this will mount on your D3300 because again, the mount has not changed. You can actually still mount it on there. But the important thing is how much automation do you want? Right now, notice how it says there is no lens attached. It does not know that there is a lens on here because there is no electronic contact. So for this kind of photography, any kind of imaging like this, you're going to have to work with the full manual setting. So that means you're gonna pick the shutter speed here and you're gonna set your lens opening, like on this guy, which is the older design, you're actually setting your aperture on the actual lens. And of course, fully manual focus. There is no autofocus feature on this guy. But if you want to maintain your full automation, you have to make sure you work with the DX lenses, which are the AFS design. That means that these guys are meant to work with the focusing motor that is in the lens as opposed to the camera which doesn't have it. So that means that even some of the older lenses that are AFS like this oldie but goodie 18 to 70, we can mount on here. And again, the mount has not changed. Line it up. And now I can set it to full auto and it does all the focusing and everything for me. So it works perfectly. It's meant to work with it 
without any hassle whatsoever. And of course, there are other lens manufacturers out there. This is a very popular one, these new all-in-ones. This one happens to be a Tamron 16-300. to And this one does come with the correct mount and motor to work with the Nikon D3300. Again, the connection has not changed. It's been the same forever, but guess what? The important thing is that they gave you the automatic focusing system and the automation. So again, I can work on full auto and be able to get great images with this, whether I want to do stills or video. How long can I shoot continuous video for on my Nikon D3300? Well, like most DSLRs, they do have a limitation and it has to do with the fact of not wanting that sensor to overheat. This model happens to give you about 20 minutes of continuous video shooting. So notice when you have it set to live view and you're ready for video, click your record button and there it says it right there in the corner. It says 20 minutes and it's counting down. You really don't want to push it to the max. You want to stop recording before it gets to the limit because sometimes you can take the chance and actually have the camera overheat and then it's going to shut down and not turn on again until it completely cools down. So take into consideration you have 20 minute clips so try to do 15 minute clips and then combine them in your favorite movie editing software. Does my Nikon D3300 have continuous focus when I'm doing video? No, it does not. That feature is not incorporated when you're doing video, which of course, remember, we have to switch it to live view. And you start your recording. First, you want to press here to bring it into focus and press your record button. But notice, if I move to another section, I have to refocus again. And then if I go back over here, I have to press the refocus button again. It is not something that it does automatically. I would get comfortable doing it back here to lock the focus, but you, have, you can do it either way. But you do have to continuously refocus when you are working with your 3300. That's why I know a lot of videographers that have chosen to do manual focus when they're working with their Nikon D3300 SLR for video purposes. Can I shoot movies while looking through the optical viewfinder? No, notice that when I press my record button, which is the red one here, nothing occurs. It's not doing anything because it needs to be in live view. By pressing the LV button, now this moves a reflex mirror out of the way and allows you to do video recording right from your sensor. Notice when I press the record button, it starts to record. Can I take a picture while shooting video with my Nikon D3300? No, I'm afraid not because once you have it activated to video mode and you press your record button, notice how it's recording right now. If I want to shoot an image, I can do so because I can go ahead and press the shutter and take a shot, but it now disengaged the video recording mode. So you have to press it to start recording again. So it's not an automatic feature, but you can get around it, but it's just not something that the camera is set up to do for you. Can I charge my Nikon D3300 through USB? No, the USB port that you have here on the side is strictly for transferring files. This is a DSLR. And yes, I know there are some other companies out there, I'm talking about you, Sony, that think it makes sense to try to charge your battery while in the camera through USB. No, I don't think so. I think Nikon got it right. You take out your popular ENEL 14A battery and you receive the MH24 wall wart, which plugs directly into the wall. Place your battery in here, plug it in, and as soon as you have a constant orange light, that means you're fully charged, which usually takes about an hour or so. And remember, this is a universal charger, so this will travel with you anywhere you go. 
It works from 100 to 240 volts, but of course, being a USA product, you are receiving the USA plug. All you need is a adapter and you're set. Plus, folds up, very easy to travel, and again, it charges in about an hour. Can I take sports and action pictures of my kids in their soccer practice or any events that they're in with my new Nikon D3300? Absolutely. And they made it simple. They gave you the different scene modes on top and the ones that are the most popular are right here. So for example, you have to look for the one that shows the little running guy. That's your sports mode. In this mode now, the camera automatically switches to continuous focusing. So it gives you the fastest focusing possible. Plus, it sets it to continuous shooting. So this way you can capture any kind of moving subject matter without having to worry about whether I set the correct exposure, did I put the fast enough shutter speed, what I set my ISO to. In this mode, the camera handles everything for you, but you are pre-telling it, hey, this is the kind of imaging that I want to do and I want to guarantee to get the shot. Can I shoot raw images with my Nikon D3300? Absolutely. Nikon has always allowed you to do raw shooting with their DSLRs, but you have to set it in the menu. So we have to activate our menu and always set yourself to manual so that you have all your menu options activated. Go into your shooting menu, which is the one with the little green camera, and scroll down to where it says image quality. Move it to the right and there you notice that you have raw capability and if you have a large enough memory card, which most of us do nowadays, you can actually record one image in RAW and one image in JPEG fine. So you do have the option of doing RAW files on your Nikon D3300. What size memory card can I use with my Nikon D3300 DSLR? Well, not the sky's the limit, but remember, this does work with the standard SDXC card. What does that XC mean? Extra capacity. That means that these cards eventually will make it up into the terabytes. Yep, hear me right, terabytes. But what you have to keep in mind is not the size, because they're going to keep growing, obviously. Keep in mind your classification. Here you see a very common size, 32 gigabyte, and it's a class 10. That means it allows it to work with the DSLRs and it doesn't slow down your buffering. Now, the sizes, like I said, are getting larger. Here's a very huge 128 gigabyte. This one is also a class 10, but it is the U version 3. What does that mean? Notice that it says 1000X. So this is great for you videographers. You want something really fast that allows you to maintain your video speeds without any kind of buffering or staggering or stuttering. And then of course, there are some of us that prefer using micro SD cards because they're swappable between a lot of our different products, whether it's our smartphones or tablets or even our action cameras like the GoPros. You can use something like this. Again, this one is a 64 gig and of course it is also a classification 10 so you put it into your SD card adapter and it will insert itself very easily into your Nikon D3300. Can I work in low light situations with my Nikon D3300? Of course, but you have many different factors to come to this conclusion. Number one, if you're a person that likes to work on the auto settings, it does have a night portrait mode, but this mode, in case you haven't used it before, does take into consideration that it needs to use the strobe and also needs to take a longer exposure. So that means that you are going to have to put it on a steady surface like a table or a wall or somewhere or obviously a tripod. So if you have something like this which is nice and compact that you can take with you everywhere, this will make your life a lot easier. Plus, if you want to do really long exposures, then you're going to go in here into your shutter speed setting and you're going to pick the shutter speed yourself. 
and again working with these slow shutter speeds it's going to have to sit on a steady surface so you're going to have to put it on a tripod and then the other alternative is you can also go into your ISO setting and bump up the ISO considerably I mean look we can go all the way up to 12,800 ISO so again it allows you to work in lower light situations but you got to keep an eye on your shutter speed because if your shutter speed is still shooting at 1 16th of a second or one second exposures you're going to have to use some kind of stable source like a, a flat surface like this or some kind of a tripod Can I shoot longer than 30 second exposures on my Nikon D3300? Well, you can, but you have to have the appropriate setting. So if I set it to shutter priority and I go to do my settings, notice how it stops at 30 seconds. So that is a maximum on shutter priority mode. But if I switch over to manual, I can now switch to bulb which is the one where it maintains itself open as you're depressing the shutter and when you release it stops the exposure usually you want to use a uh, remote control for that feature you don't want to do it on the camera but then if you want to do it on the camera they do have the time setting and that one is simpler because that one once your camera is on a steady surface like a tripod when you depress the shutter it starts the exposure and it will stop the exposure once you press the shutter again. Again, that's another option to be able to take long exposures, especially if you're doing time lapse or star trails, anything which requires really long exposures that you have the bulb one, which I would highly recommend using a remote, and then you have the time one. Can I use my Nikon D3300 for landscape photography? Absolutely. They even give you right here on the top dial that little square that looks like a blob in it. That's supposed to be the designation of a mountain. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not the one, but guess what? That icon's been around for a while. That's the one that automatically sets it to landscape mode. So now the camera knows to close down on your f-stop and work with more depth of field in your imaging. And of course, it all depends on the type of lens you're working with. This one happens to be the standard 18 to 55. So if you want to do some wide angle shots, you most likely are always going to have to set it to 18 millimeter. And of course, there are other lenses that are optional out there that you can get for it, or you can get wide angle adapters. Now, this is the easier way. Of course, we can always go the tried and true and set your f-stop so now I'm going to close down on the aperture myself so that I can get the most amount of depth of field and it does the shutter speed and the ISO for me. So again, you have many different ways to do it. Plus, always remember you have to work with the wider perspective lenses to be able to get those beautiful, nice landscape shots. Does my Nikon D3300 have image stabilization in the body? No, no Nikon. Again, this is a company that's been doing vibration reduction on their lenses for many years. So you get what they call VR. That is their version of image stabilization on the lenses. And actually most of Nikon's newer lenses now are coming with VR. But let's say for example, you get another manufacturer lens like perfect example this one is a very popular Tamron 16 to 300 they call it VC vibration control and then let's say for example you get also a very popular lens from Sigma this is their 18 to 300 this one has OS optical stabilization that's their version so you will have to make the decision of whether you need image stabilization in your lens when you're working with the Nikon D3300 Can I use an external microphone for my Nikon D3300? Absolutely. Nikon gave you a nice microphone port right on the side here. Notice where it says mic. Lift a protective cover and there it is. So you can use the standard 3.5 jack connection. Plugs right in. 
and then you can slide on your favorite condenser or whatnot microphone you prefer to use. I mean, some of us even work with lavaliers like I do. This one happens to be a really nice condenser microphone that I like to use on the go. And again, of course, you can go into your menu and switch on noise reduction. You can go into your movie settings and here's your microphone setting where you can change the sensitivity. You can have auto sensitivity or you can have it set manually and you can choose the amount of audio decibels you want and save it. So they give you a really nice way to work with an external microphone for all your video needs. Can I shoot black and white images with my Nikon D3300? Yes, you have two different ways of doing it. The first way to do it is you can go into your retouch menu. So now click on the menu button and scroll down to where it says retouch and go in here and you'll see that there's one that has monochrome. And when you move to the right, you open up the capabilities of doing black and white, sepia and xenotype. Now, when you roll over, now you can choose the image that you want to create in black and white. And there it is. Now I have this image in a black and white version. And when you do that, you still have your original color and you have now the black and white version. Now, some of us are purists and there's a lot of people out there and photographers that prefer doing it originally in black and white. You also have that version also. Now, on this, remember, you will be shooting always in black and white until you change it. So let's go back into our menu and notice now how I'm going to go back into the shooting menu and scroll down to where it says set picture control. Now when you move to the right, now you notice that you have different settings whether you want standard, neutral, vivid, boom, there's your monochrome. So activate that and you can actually change your settings, your toning, you, that gives you a lot of control in here, even your sharpening. Once you switch over to monochrome and you choose the version that you want, hit OK and then go back over here and now you notice that it says MC for monochrome. So once I switch over to live view, there you go. Now your image is originally going to be in black and white. And remember, it will stay that way until you choose to change it. So if you need to do color and black and white, you have to make a decision of whether you want to do it after the fact in retouching or originally just in black and white. Mm -hmm.